Hello, everybody, and welcome into the hey. final episode <laughs> of the War of Civility. I'm John Hand, standing alongside me, as always. We're sitting. Tim Sirota and Phil Panarski. Uh, David Sando is in studio as well. Uh, decided to make an appearance for the last one, and it's good to see that uh, Tim is being his normal self for the last episode. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Episode 1 to 10, whatever we're at now. Nothing's changed. Um, so what a day for Mark, um, Milwaukee basketball yesterday. Um, Bucks beat the undefeated Warriors, uh, give them their first loss of the season. And Marquette basketball heads down to Madison at the Kohl Center and picks up a huge W there. Uh, great day to be a Milwaukee basketball fan, a uh, Marquette fan, a uh, uh, Bucks fan. So Bucks supporter, no Bucks supporter, yeah, <laughs> whatever you want to be. Um, well, I, I mean, you gotta you gotta thank the um, Boston Celtics for um, they we, they yeah. seventy five beating them seventy five percent, and then the Bucks just, just sort of finish the job. Finish the job. I mean, double <laughs> overtime. Bottom line, I hear is everything relates back to Boston. Bottom line. Of well, I mean, no. Two starters. No, I mean that's. Yeah. I think that's a valid point. No, I, I mean, the Celtics sort of beat them up on Friday and... No, I, I'm and, agree- Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I, I'm just saying that, like, everything good that happens to Milwaukee... Oh, oh, because, oh, of course. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the good happens in the world is because... I mean, the, the, Marquette, the Marquette basketball is obviously back on track because John and I decided to come to school here. Right. Both. <laughs> Na- naturally. And um, we don't Top accept... Two lo- recruits. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't accept losing. I mean, so... That's that's what happens. That's what happens. Um, I don't know. Quick takeaways from the Marquette game. Lo- uh, Luke Fisher is probably one of our best. Is Marquette's best player. Mm-hmm. The way he played yesterday defensively. Obviously that huge rebound at the end, but huge defensive plays down the stretch. Uh, worked great down the post. And I also loved uh, the big thing. I think I took away from it also was that the way Henry Allenson commanded the ball in the pressure situations and didn't shy away from it. That's what you want from your star player, and that's right. what he showed us. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm just going to read a text I sent to my dad right after the game. I said, Fisher had been struggling during the first half and most of the second, but the guy proved he's the MVP with the play of the game with the offensive rebound at the end. And that's to- it's it's so true because we're watching it, and Fisher, he looked sort of out of it in the first half. They were playing really strong defense on him. He was missing missing um, short jump shots, at, but this guy never, never, I mean, cliche, never gave up. Right. But and he was there at the end to make the the play of the game. Right. No. And a play that I mean it might be a little bit early, but that might have been that that's a that's a tournament resume win. If you could say that you went up to Madison and won. Yeah. No, I think the biggest thing from to take away from Marquette from this game is we started off the game, I think we had in our first five possessions we had four turnovers. Yeah. That wasn't good. <laughs> Completely stopped that this yeah, exactly. game. Uh, yeah. You cut out right. the turnovers, we're up tournament team for sure yeah and also looking if you watched the belmont game versus the game yesterday it's totally it's night and day Mm -hmm. this the offense is it it actually they actually move the basketball now (laughs) they drive and they don't just hang out by the perimeter and they play to their strengths ellison ellison looked i wouldn't say that he looked for the first time but he, that guy looked like a top five pick yesterday. Mm-hmm. He was the player of the game because he took he took over it. He drove, and he no one on Wisconsin could stop him. Right. Usually with Ellenson, he gets the quiet double double. Yeah. He does the good things quietly. But in this game, like you said, for the first time, really, I think we we saw the player that you would maybe ex- you would more expect to see when you hear top five recruit. And I'm okay with him doing the quiet things and not being flashy. Right. But at the same time, it's nice to see that he can come out here and drive to the hoop and do put some moves on these guys to uh, put some points on the board. Yeah, yeah. he certainly was, certainly was not quiet uh, yesterday. He put his stamp on that game. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. probably one of the better players in that game was Dwayne Wilson coming off the bench. Tracy picked up those two quick fouls, and he came off, played pretty good defense, hit a three at the end to – Kind of keep I mean, they really, they really all did. There wasn't, there wasn't a guy on the team that you could point to and say he, he didn't, didn't, he didn't play up to snuff. He didn't do his job. It's just playing, playing at, oh, uh, at Wisconsin is such a tough place to play. Right. And these guys still are so young, but they, they, they weathered the storm and they got the W. Right. And that's really all that matters. Any comments, Sando? All right, where to begin? First of all, Marquette owns the Badger State, I guess. <laughs> State champs. Um, essentially, I mean, I know UWF beat them too. 
Uh, <laughs> secondly, on the dwindles. But Marquette, Marquette did sneak up on him. You, Marquette. Right, right. That was a game the whole time. UWM, UWM did. was kind of surprising. Um, Dwayne Wilson, I'd say. I, see, I think Dwayne Wilson's outplayed Tracy Carter the entire season. Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I oh, think, I don't know about I think that. Right now, he has the James Harden complex where Coach Wojo wants to take him off the bench because mm-hmm. he knows he's going to push that energy into the game. Um, but yeah, I don't know. So, um, and then the other thing is, I think yeah, I think Henry uh, he signed his uh, his 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 draft um, <laughs> declar- declaration right. was signed last night. Especially with that interview at the yeah. end of the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That 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 interview was wild. I mean, that, was, that was a big game on ESPN two. Yeah. And the the si- the sixteen round fight comment was just hilarious. <laughs> National TV. Like, uh, did you guys hear that after the game too? The um one of the analysts, Jeff Goodman at ESPN, was like, they got Henry here because Wally, yeah. because they recruited Wally, yeah. which is partially true. But then the guy went on to just go spit on Wally's grave. He's like, Wally doesn't play at all. But it was a great recruiting move. I was like, dude, how many games have you watched? He clearly played. Look at a stat sheet. He plays. He's got I mean, numbers. W- Wally, Wally Allenson, just on a complete side note, is is the most – he might be the most interesting guy I've ever watched in my entire life because the only thing this guy can do is dunk. And he dunks just – he's an incredible dunker. Oh, yeah. And he, he's, he's unreal at, at putbacks. Well, he's an Olympic high jumper. And it's yeah. like, that's all he does. And it's insane. Yeah. Anyway, um, this is our last episode, as we mentioned. So we're going to be recapping the whole semester that was. It's also the last episode before Christmas. Wow. And believe it or not, Mr. Tim Sirota, <laughs> Mr. Grinch, Mr. Scrooge, whatever you want to call him, because he, <laughs> he hates Christmas. He hates it. I don't hate Christmas. Oh, you're like, heat miser. You're making, you're you're heat making miser. me seem you're making me seem like Ebenezer Scrooge. Like that's not what I am. I just I just don't like this this like this this pregame hype. Like when you start when that's the, that's when I'm holiday. like that is that's a good core. I mean, Christmas I'm, Day itself, if you were like Christmas Day itself yeah, stinks. I'd be like, great. okay, I agree with that. The hype is like the holiday. The hype, exactly. I, I mean, the hype is easily half the holiday. I mean, yeah. I mean, when I'm walking when I'm walking to the bathroom in November and I hear Santa Baby down my hallway. We're in December now. I I understand okay. that, and I'm not really like gonna gonna riot if i hear christmas music right now <laughs> it's just it's just not my cup of tea okay anyway despite how much he just says he hates christmas music <laughs> he did put three songs together for our breaks to listen to and we're gonna listen to the first one right now what are we listening to uh it's a uh, holiday classic from um everybody's favorite cartoon so okay enjoy right. uh we're coming back oh, with baseball good. we have nfl stuff uh college football so don't go anywhere yeah <gasps>
welcome back to the War of Civility. Tim, thank you for that. Did you like that? No. Nope. No. Nope. Yeah, I brightened up the morning. <laughs> I just <laughs> nope. Just to... <laughs> that, yeah. Uh, that was. Stay tuned. That was from the SpongeBob Christmas special, and uh, I'm also gonna rank my top three Christmas specials. So stay tuned for that. Mm-hmm. SpongeBob will be making an appearance. So uh, you got one third of it covered. Yeah. So a lot of a <laughs> lot of um. Lot, are yeah. you are you are you questioning my um my Christmas special? No, selection? I mean uh, I mean you are not the biggest Christmas fan, so I'll go ahead and say that maybe yours doesn't hold as much weight. But <laughs> I didn't even know there <laughs> was not... a SpongeBob Christmas special. Are you kidding me? I didn't know that's that. the best one. It's the one where um I don't know if that's the best one. <laughs> yes, it is. It's totally. Is. It's the one where um um <laughs> like Squidward doesn't believe in Santa and everybody gets presents but him. Okay, that's classic. I mean, that's a pretty classic SpongeBob. That's probably a SpongeBob like plotline for. Any that's episode. like the plotline for almost Christmas every Santa. Christmas special <laughs> ever. Yeah, Somebody doesn't too. believe in Santa, and believe. then a bunch of crap goes down, and then yeah. Santa makes an appearance at the end. And then it changes the, the how everybody thinks about exactly. life. Exactly. <laughs> probably they won't. No up wait, no, no, no. I, 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 I didn't give it just. So, um, SpongeBob. Actually, Sandy, Sandy came down and gave all gave the words of um, Santa. And SpongeBob got everybody excited. They uh-huh. all sent their letters up to SpongeBob. Santa. Still believes in Santa, even though he's yeah. a thirty-five-year-old man. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah. He's a and, then, and then Squidward, Squidward uh, wanted to give everybody a happy uh, Christmas, so he gave away all of his things. Wait, is it Happy Christmas? On he wanted the Christmas to give, special. He wanted to give everybody a Happy Christmas. I don't know, Merry Christmas. There Merry we Christmas. go. I, I don't know. Happy Christmas same. sounds so different. It, I, I wasn't saying, like, happy Christmas. I was saying he wanted to give people, like, okay. a, a joyful Christmas. All right, I get what you're saying. I okay. Sports. What, what are we doing? Back to sports. Sports happen. Um, well, I, I mean, I got my SpongeBob pick challenge, so. <laughs> I don't even know. What, okay. Words um, are hard. I'm not going to ask. Words are hard. Um, anyway, so the, it's been um, – it's actually been a pretty warm winter here in Milwaukee, and it's just heating up with the MLB postseason. That was hey. that was a – that was a C, C minus. <laughs> So that was a C minus pod. I felt pretty good about I, that. I liked it. We, we need to get like an explosion plus. sound effect. Yeah, I have an explosion nice. sound effect. It's in the intro. All right, oh. but we need it like on the ready every should have thought of that episode too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have let me know. <laughs> Not 11. Anyway, uh, lots of action going on in the, in the MLB um, postseason. Baseball looks different. Uh, baseball definitely looks different. A lot of interesting storylines going into next season, which will make it a lot more interesting. I'm excited for this mm-hmm. upcoming baseball season. Um, Jason Hayward's going to the Cubs on a hundred eighty-four million dollar deal. Uh, ben Zobris signed to I don't, that wasn't on last week, right? That happened. We didn't get a chance to talk I think about that. No, it happened didn't. Sunday. We yeah. didn't. It was past. It was during the week. Yeah. Um. And we're also gonna. We started talking about this last time. What we do if we had a pitcher's contract, and we're gonna finish. We had. We each came up with a list of the three things we'd buy, and so we're gonna um finish that discussion. Right. Uh, I'll throw. I know Tim's upset about one of the one deal that went down. I mean, I wouldn't. About it. I wouldn't say I'm upset because you're, you're puzzled about. I'm it. puzzled. I'm puzzled mm-hmm. with um, Arizona, right. and they. For those of you who don't know, they traded the number one, the number one overall pick in last year's uh, first year draft, the entry draft, to Atlanta, in return for Shelby Miller. Now, I mean, it's 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 a, it's interesting. It's I can't I can't bash them too badly because, frankly, this guy hasn't even played in the minors very much. So you don't really know what you're gonna get. Yeah, out of, I'd bash him. Oh, and, I'd bash him. <laughs> all right. Well, you don't really know what you're gonna get for it. He could he could be a star. He also could be like some other top picks and not do anything. But the return the return you got is just is just I I, I simply I don't understand it. Like you could package this guy, and I if you would package this guy and trade him for uh, Jose Fernandez from Miami, who's the best pitcher on the market right now. Oh no, he's a, on he, the market. Well, he's not. He's technically not on the market. Right. But he's he's on the trading block. On the trading block, he's yeah, the best pitcher on the trading block. Miami was messing around. They were just that was for. I think they'll deal him. Giggles. I think they'll deal him. They'll get so much no, more they if won't. they get rid of him. Oh, they won't. They won't deal him. No, oh, I, I think so. They, they were if they were, they were going to do it at winter meetings, and they didn't do it. Mm. They're, I mean, they were talking about how they were entertaining offers, but then the end 
at the end of the winter meetings, they're like, yeah, that's not that's not happening. <laughs> we, we, we got you. We right. got you guys. All right, all. fine. I'll <laughs> I'll take that. Take okay, fine. So yeah. if they traded him for a number right, one yeah. caliber starter is what I was Jose trying to Fernandez, get. Fernandez, yeah, that would be a better trade. Yeah, right. they could package him up and get somebody very very good for him. Right. And what they got is is a decent. Major League number two. I don't think he's established, but I th- I think Shelby Miller's definitely he is definitely gonna be a top thrower. He's gonna be solid for Arizona. Yeah, and I think if you're if you're a team, this would be a move that I would like if I was say the Cubs and I needed a couple more pieces to get to the World Series. Okay. But Arizona is not Shelby Miller is not gonna push them above and make them the World Series favorites in the National League. That's maybe with Granky and them with Granky and Miller at the top of the rotation, you're more likely to make the playoffs and might have a run. But I think they're a pennant favorite. They're right they're you're, right you're with the Cubs. Oh, oh I, I don't think I don't so. know about I, that. Their lineup is solid. You got AJ Pollock, Paul Goldschmidt. You got I mean they got some they good, have young a good talent. They, yeah, but they the the And now they have a good bullpen, they have a very underrated bullpen, which bullpen is very important. Yeah, but they have some they have some serious um, holes still right now. I and I think they have two solidified starters, which I mean in the playoffs, that's all you need is two starters. They have three. I'd give I think Corbin's a pretty legitimate Okay. Legit, pretty legitimate. No, yeah, player. I mean and that's the thing. That's all you need for the playoffs. So I mean I think they're I, I, know, I think they're, they're a pen they are, favorite. They have to get to the playoffs first, which I think is going to be difficult because they play in the NL West. Because you have the LA Dodgers, who are obviously a perennial powerhouse. Even though they lost Greinke, they still have Kershaw, and they still have some young starters in their system, and they still have an incredible lineup. The Dodgers will pose a threat. Can't, and, can't disregard the Giants either. Well, I was that's my favorite team. I was just getting there. I was, you want me to get started <laughs> on the Giants? Here we go on the Giants. Our lineup is like the best it's been since I've been a fan. Since I was born. Okay, maybe a Bonds lineup with Kent. All right, maybe that lineup. But this lineup is fantastic. It's like I think it's one of the best lineups in baseball, and it's a majority homegrown. And it's an even year. And I'm not going to try to – I'm going to knock on wood because I don't want to, like – even though that's, like, the stigma that's around baseball, that's surrounding, they're like, let's watch the Giants because it's an even year. I think we can easily make a run for the division. And I honestly – I just – I would look at how Arizona plays within the division because I think that's going to be big. Their success should be still, They're still – even though they traded the the number one prospect for Miller, they're still young. And and – I don't know. I don't know if, if second, their second base shortstop and third base are all under are all twenty five and under. Right. Their their catcher Wellington Castillo stinks. No, yeah, <laughs> the catchers are hard in baseball. Though. True, Unless true. You have, I'm not. You, you know, can't. Buster Posey or Yachty. You can't. Yeah. You can win a World Series with a with a really bad. Catcher. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I mean, I just I just don't know if they're gonna hold up with with four of the guys being so so such big um question marks well yeah right. when you're young you have to worry about the fact that it's 162 game season yeah. and, and they really they really in. have it they really have a couple of seasons to win this world series oh, yeah, or else no, it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be Definitely. yeah a poor poor choice well, let's hope yeah. for their sake that um dansby swanson doesn't turn into a star right <laughs> total stud yeah <laughs> well, and shelby miller doesn't lose 17 games again <laughs> is there any moves for you phil that stuck out um no, like, specific move, but we, I think the Cubs probably had the best offseason by far, so far out of any definitely. team. Yeah. Um, you got rid of Starlin Castro, which, I mean... I don't know if I love that move for them. See, Oh, I do. I, I, I feel... Better, yeah, Ben Zobris is right a much now. better player. And then you get Jason Hayward and Adam Warren from the Yankees for Starlin Castro. I just feel like Starlin Castro was kind of the... He was hurting the locker room a lot in the off season and everything because he came in when he first came into the Cubs, he was like the next big thing. And you know, he was one of their top players for a while and then uh Addison Russell came in, kind of took over that position, and then he gets hurt and then Castro has to come back in and Castro didn't perform very well in the playoffs. It was um it was uh the Stella who who took his job? Addison Russell plays shortstop. Oh yeah. Well, and I guess they but Russell, Russell came in and moved, had to move him. Yeah. And then they wanted to bring in um, Tommy or Tommy uh Tony Tony La, La Stella, and yeah. And but when Russell got hurt, they put in Castro. La Stella, La Stella, Russell played in the playoffs. No, he got hurt. Remember. 
I, I nonetheless, I mean, sure you, either way. you bring in Ben Zobrist. Obviously, he's an established MLB guy. You know what he's going to give you. Guy. He's going to give you, uh, yeah, good guy, good clubhouse, all that. Very, very yeah. versatile. Versatile player. He's a contact hitter. Oh, yeah. Good that's role player. The, that's the biggest why I like that move so much is that he's a contact hitter. And the Cubs struck out way too much in right. the playoffs. Right. And that this will help them along with the Hayward. My point with the Starlin Castro is he's a younger player. I know he's had a few years, hasn't always, you know, I know the playoffs this year didn't perform well. He's had a few other not great um, uh, seasons or whatever. But nonetheless, he's a guy who I see has a lot more upside than Zobrist. And I know Zobrist is going to help you for the next one to two seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and he obviously has a much longer contract than that. But I still would... In the looking at the future, I still would say you'd want Castro playing second base for you because mm -hmm. of that upside, and I still think he'd be able to help you in the right now as right. well. I, so well, that's the one move. You well, know, maybe it had something to do with the locker room stuff. Yeah. Maybe not. I, I don't mean, know. from the, well, from the Cubs standpoint, I think that's a great move. Yeah. I really do. Well, this, the biggest, they wanted to get rid of him so badly. Yeah. Well, we're not even talking about the biggest move the Cubs made. Getting John Lackey and. Giving them a, I mean, the biggest, the, the biggest, biggest move Hayward. Is, is a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> the, John the Cubs, Lackey. I like John Lackey. Yeah, yeah. I like, the, I like it's the move, but it's, it's the, not the, the biggest. I'll jump on the, the John Cubs Lackey lineup, train. The Cubs lineup could have used a little bit more, you know, but they didn't really need it. But they didn't really need it. They, they need their, they, their rotation. They, I know, but they needed that third starter more than anybody. And getting John Lackey as that third starter, that's a good move. I no, I like that. No, yeah. I'm with Phil on this. Oh, you, I, that's a huge move. No, I'm not, it is. It is. I'm not taking I'm not, I'm not, Jason away. Hayward was so expensive. Yeah, I'm he not taking so anything expensive. away from Jason Hayward. The Jason Hayward move was great. Yeah. The Ben Zobris, ben Zobris move was great. great. Move. But getting that John third Lackey's starter huge. you need... It's exactly what the Cubs did. They needed. saved so much money because the biggest starters on the market, I mean, commanded over thirty million dollars a year. Right. Yeah, but I mean, you don't want to contribute that to David Price. I mean, Lackey's thirty-six years yeah, old, exactly. and they you don't need a number one. Wait, you can't. Yeah, you can't be like. Exactly. You can't be like. Oh, it's a great move them signing John Lackey and not wasting all that money on. I'm not saying no, those, but they they're need, not even comparable. But I they mean, need that well, third they star. Were, I'm, I'm talking about. I'm it. with you on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, no, they and, need that third star. I'm not like saying that. Oh, because they didn't spend a lot. They didn't spend David Price money on him. That's a good well, thing. That's yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely not a bad thing. But no, getting I've, John Lackey, I mean, he's probably not gonna show up. That you know, he's not gonna have great numbers in the regular season. But in the postseason, oh, he's one of the best pitchers, yeah, and he's he gonna a great provide a great pitcher. veteran presence. Right. And I mean, Beard and chicken, That's all I have to say. <laughs> and I mean, all, well, <laughs> the other thing. I, okay, what I was saying earlier, the Cubs were in the running for uh, – they were early in the running for Granke, early in the running for Price, early mm -hmm. in the running for Samardra. They definitely made offers. And comparing to, like, the – I think the upside that would have been there in signing an additional number one starter – I don't think is comparable with the money you would have had to spend, or even some margin I mean, right. than the money that they're spending on lacking the value that they're going to get. No, out I of mean, him. okay, value and money in baseball is the most overrated thing to evaluate. No. It, no. It, there's no salary cap. It, yeah, you're gonna you have can spend to, as much money as you want. Exactly, you're gonna have to pay that much no matter what. Right. First of all, there's still luxury taxes. Second of all, your owners have to contribute all this money. I mean, money ball is These a thing. These guys are rich. That's not my huge. money. I don't yeah, care. Who cares? Value no, is huge. You don't have to. It's not like the. It's not like the NHL where you have to have. It's not like any other sport ever that yeah, they all have yeah, salary like, caps. Yeah, exactly. So it's but, not like where you have to work the work the roster and then. I you totally in, have to work the roster. Not really. That's why the trade. Okay, that's why the block exists essentially is because people are trying to get rid of salary. You look at some of the biggest like busts in baseball is even though there's no salary cap, there's still value and there's still like we're spending this much money on this guy. Right. Like there's still that. Yeah, but and, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Like it's huge because you just saw. Okay, the Dodgers just they went balls to the wall these last five seasons. Spent had an ash the first team to a two hundred million dollar payroll. They had the highest payroll. They still probably have the highest payroll. Right. The money that they're paying to players that don't play for them. Is I think it would be in the top ten of payrolls, and right. these guys aren't even on their team. Value is huge because now the Dodgers are panicking. They just fired their coach. They have a new general manager uh, all of last year. They're not spending huge sums of cash, and 
even though it's not their money and it seems infinite and it's coming, there's still value in baseball and they still look at how much can we actually play these players. And that's why I think ultimately, that's why Zach Greinke went to the D-backs because the Dodgers were not willing to give him that much money. Yeah. Or that long a contract because right. they didn't value him that much. I think value's huge. Okay, if a guy is horrible, I get not wanting to pay him that much money. But let's look at let's step back and look at, at John and I's favorite team, uh the Red Sox. And last offseason they signed uh Pablo Sandoval and Hanley Ramirez for just huge just gobs of money. Wasted and, money. And they are they are they are I wouldn't say Dreadful. That's probably they're underperforming. The word. They're underperforming. Thank you, Phil. No problem. And <laughs> but yet they still have enough that they could just. Oops, that like that never happened. Let's go sign David Price now and yeah, let's throw in a big thirty-one market. million at him. Yeah, no, if, you, if you're right. in a big market, this has yeah, nothing to do with you at all. Team, but if you want to talk about if you want to talk about the Red Sox, you got you have to talk about the horrible free agency they had where they signed Adrian Gonzalez, Carl Crawford. They spent so much money and then they traded them away you remember boston fans were throwing dollar bills at them because it was a waste of their i mean value exists even those big markets yeah, will shed it yeah it they didn't will shed hurt, the contract it didn't hurt them at all once they it traded gonzalez them. and crawford the next season they won the world series the thing is that right. crawford and it's not necessary i don't think it's necessarily the contract that they gave crawford and gonzalez it's the players they they were signing and what i mean by that is Neither one of those guys really wanted to play in Boston. Right. And that was the I, I big the, problem. I think the Crawford deal was horrible. You knew Crawford was an injury guy coming in. Yeah. Even and so, I don't think he, he didn't want to be here. He still, he st- I mean, just to prove that point, he still talks about how much he hates Boston. Mm-hmm. See, he did not want to be here, and that's going to be a problem in the clubhouse. He's obviously not going to go perform. So I, I think that had more to do with um, – more to do with it than not. But anyway, we're talking about money, this is a great segue. I read this in Sports Illustrated. I'm reading it right out of the magazine right now. Uh, the, I gave him credit. I cited my source. <laughs> David just said I was plagiarizing. I cited my source. Um, in the uh, in the six-day span uh, last week, uh, Major League teams shelled out $623 million to four pitchers. Jesus. Over the uh, next... <laughs> Over the next 18, 18 of those <laughs> to 24 to four pitchers. Yeah, eighteen of the twenty three seasons those guys are under contract. Those teams will pay the pitchers an average of twenty nine million dollars when they are thirty two years old and older. Uh, so that's huge money, huge money. And uh, we started this debate last week. What well, we decided we would spend if we got a pitcher's contract, and we each uh, came up today with three things we'd buy if we got a pitcher's salary. Uh, two of you came up with it. I'm still, I'm still uh, thinking. Okay. I gotta okay. come up. I'm All gonna right. come up with it. Would you like me to start head. then? I would like you to start. All right. All right. In no particular order. The first thing I think I'd buy. You gotta go car. Okay. Yeah. But I'm talking. Yeah. I'm not get. I'm not going down. Right. I'm not going to the Toyota dealership. <laughs> I'm not even going Camry. to Mercedes. But I'm getting something imported. <laughs> I'm. I'm getting a six figure. It's something that. You drive down the street and you're turning your head around and like, <laughs> what was that? Like, I have never seen that before. This is a nice car. You're gonna put wings on it. <laughs> w- wings, the whole nine yards, everything, everything. That's the first. Phil, what did you buy? Um. See, I guess I kind of misunderstood. I thought it was like three different things we would do with our money. So I picked like three super expensive things. Okay, All fine. right, that's fine. All right. You just saying the first All right. one. No, no, no particular order. Um. Gotta go exotic animal. I'm sticking with buying yes! a giraffe. Sticking I'm with you. I'm with you on Stick that. Buying. Well, that was uh, yeah. yeah. That was my number two. Yeah. What exotic Bu- animal are you buying? A giraffe. Oh, I love Definitely it. a giraffe. I love it. That means you're gonna have to buy a house to go with it. Though. Ex- that could, that could hold the giraffe. I, th- I think a oh. trailer park with a giraffe <laughs> attached <laughs> with a giraffe <laughs> attached to it would be fine. <laughs> well, I'm I'm going tiger. I okay. Tiger. Yeah. Nothing says I'm rich like I have an exotic pet. Exactly. Like, I mean, yeah, I have a dog. I have a cat. No, I have a tiger. <laughs> the thing with the tiger is you're, you have to pay someone like to come to your house every day to feed that thing, yeah. like a zookeeper. Oh, I'm, I, yeah, I'm not going in there with that thing. Right. All right. So um, first, I'm gonna go with an armadillo. Because... Why would you buy an ar- armadillo? <laughs> That's not exotic at all. I don't care. I'm sure cool. you can get those at Petco. Just kidding, I can't. That was a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen an armadillo? Those things are sick. Um, 
Second, they're all I, over they're Memphis. so boring. They just what do they around. do? Yeah. First of all, that's the first time I've ever heard someone say an armadillo and sick. I've never like <laughs> I've never heard someone like see an armadillo and go, "That's a sick animal." Like, but I I you know what? You got me thinking about getting right. an armadillo. I it's a it's part of the conversation now. Right. Those, um, those things why, are so fly you can't looking. Play with it? Do they even move? Like what? I don't know. They're cool. <laughs> Like oh yeah, I got a pet armadillo. Well, like I got a pet tiger. Yes, yes. What See, what do you name? Like what do you name your armadillo? Um, I don't know. Ralph First name that came up to me was Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a good armadillo. That is name. a good armadillo <laughs> name. All right, second, I'm going with a desert. I'm gonna buy a desert. Okay, I like that move. At first, I was like, what? But then I was like, you own a desert. Do you mean desert? <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> you buy. I like that yeah. move a lot. And then, it, uh, it doesn't give you anything. Yeah. What desert are you going to buy? I don't know, Sahara. The, the whole that's Sahara that's Desert? I don't know if anybody yeah, that might be out of your price range. I don't know who you buy that from. <laughs> God. Like, yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to buy like a random desert. Just and then um, not? I think I'm going to go with the dune buggy so I can like do some cool stuff in my desert. I don't think you realize how much little. money we have yeah, you're you getting like only spent like a portion yeah you, like saved it like a doom <laughs> buggy's like okay do you know how much a desert costs no <laughs> it's not cheap <laughs> the desert the desert was like good thinking but the doom buggy is like you can like you could buy that put together a doom you could buggy. buy that on a minor <laughs> league contract i'll buy exactly. a re- oh f- fine fine i'll uh let's see uh I don't know. I still want the dune buggy. Okay, Maybe okay. a sick one. You Maybe know, my, really my cool third one. one isn't like, you're, you're all going to be like, what? Second one? You haven't even said your second one. I said exotic animal. Oh, right. yeah. Exotic animal number two. Yeah, what's, your um, third. what's your number one then? I, oh, car, car, car. 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 Uh, cop out. Number okay. three. I mean, yeah, a little bit, but like, I'm not saying like I'm not like, oh, I'm going to go buy an Audi. Like, no, I'm getting He's like. He's buying a nice car. This is, this thing's being, yeah. But this is a. I want for Mr. Ferrari to make this Ferrari. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I want to be a nice car. What? Who makes? Who makes dune buggies? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Yamaha. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yamaha. Ya- Yamaha. I'll, I'll like pay them a bunch of money to make me a sick. So, I just Tim for, for the rest of his contract just. In the I'm desert, on his own wasting book. it all on it's gas. It's like the scene from Napoleon Dynamite with like the grandma. That's gonna be Tim just running around. <laughs> that would be great. Then I got, then I got, then I got Ralph in my uh, in my passenger seat. You'll get one of those like little side carts yeah. and just cruise around. Me and my homeboy Ralph in the desert. That's what I do. <laughs> Try to beat that. Have more fun than me on your on your salary. I'd like to imagine that Ralph can talk for the money that you're spending too. <laughs> Ralph definitely can talk. So you definitely you definitely got a good. I won. I won. Better be a talk. I, 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 I'm a little confused confused about the desert theme to be honest because like armadillo is a desert animal desert Desert, like why deserts right i don't know they're cool all right i'm from the desert the desert sucks (laughs) man (laughs) don't uh, buy a private island (laughs) yeah oh private island be a good one yeah my third one you're gonna question this but let me explain it all right i'm buying a mattress all right but let me hear you explain this once again i am buying a very I am buy I don't care if it's six figures. I am buying the nicest mattress possible. <laughs> and here's why. You have every night I can go to bed and it's just it would feel so good. Like a horrible day, you hit the mattress, you're gonna have a good night's sleep. You use your mattress every day and it's yeah. something that if it's a good one, it's the best thing ever. You're gonna wake up every right. morning and say, yeah. I can take on the world. So I am literally <laughs> gonna buy the nicest mattress possible. And right. I want it to be super expensive. Well, I get- if if you have the money, like pitchers do, and you buy a six figure mattress, mattress, you have a tiger and a very expensive car. How many bad nights are you honestly having? How many <laughs> bad nights are you having in the Never. desert with a dune buggy and, and Ralph? Ralph. And Ralph. Ralph. What happens when you run out of water? Or gas? Or gas? I'd buy <laughs> I'd buy water with with my contract. I think I could get a couple of water bottles with my uh, thirty million like, dollars. He's only gonna I, have you know like. A hundred million left yeah, over. Yeah, you have a lot left over. Yeah, it's all on gas I think and I can, water. Yeah, yeah, I can get a couple of water bottles, Sean. Maybe but you're probably going to want, like, water budget. stations. Cause, like, I'm all right, thinking, I'll build a water station. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, thinking, yeah, I'm thinking, thinking you run out of yeah. gas oh, yeah. in the middle of the desert. Yeah. I mean, what do you think it is? Like, dogs, if a human dies, it's, like, ten days before they start eating it, eating, the like, the person. What do you think armadillos This is a nice is? Christmas uh, do, do, do armadillos eat meat? Oh, I don't know. What's a balanced breakfast for an armadillo? Once Tim dies, how long till Ralph starts eating him? <laughs> oh, that's good. Good, good question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, what's your last NFL? Um, I would, 
strongly like I, I'd find like the best like I don't know what they're called stock people like you know stock like, broker uh, stock broker and just invested all oh that is so no, lame. no i'm not no 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 phil no, you I'm that's not, one of mine I'm not done you yet. keep it i'm you not invest. done yet i'm not done yet and then you double your money and then you buy a sports team i would that's a good idea that's a great idea that's a good idea you just made a good idea l a m e underline no but then you buy okay i don't know what sports team you can buy for 300 million phil i'm with you Oh, I'm. Yeah. Do I get my top three? Yeah. First, I'm gonna buy a jet, but not just any jet. It is the Aeron. It's based out of Reno, Nevada. It is a, it it's a it's a multi million dollar jet. It's a business jet that flies at 1.9 Mach. So if you know what Mach is, Mach Whoa. is the sound is the speed of sound. So this thing's flying at double that, and it cruises at one and a half Mach, and it's like the first. Jet in no, a while. one and a half Mach. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I, I'm flying anywhere. Then I'm gonna buy just a huge like private island mm -hmm. that has a giant house on. That's where most of my money's gonna go is to the island with the house. And I'm gonna have. How does I'm most of your money not go into this jet? Yeah. Well, the jet. Okay, you're talking a pitcher's salary. That's like two hundred million dollars. The jet is like one million dollars. The jet oh, is like a percent that's it? or like. It's like a percent or two of the total thing. It's no, it's a business jet, so it's not like a, it's not a, it's not a Boeing 747. It's a business jet. Still, I thought the, I still, I thought those things are pretty expensive. I mean, if it's going at 1.5 Mach. I think, <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think, I think the estimates. 1.5 Mach. I think the highest. I get excited about it. <laughs> you got. No, I think at the highest it's like 10 million dollars. That's it. That's it, man. You should buy one. You have a lot of money. You buy one. You got the pitcher's yeah. contract. You got everybody buy call, one. Call my yeah, there you go. Call your playing guy. So I'd buy a jet, and then I would. I would invest a lot of it because. Are you gonna buy it? I want to become Canada? uber rich. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Like, take the money. You already <laughs> are uber rich. Yeah, but you're not Coke brother. You're not Bill Gates. You're not. Um. Uh. Shoot, I can't even think. You're not Warren Buffett rich. I want to be Warren Buffett rich. Yeah. What's? I mean, when you're this, when you're making thirty mil a year. What's the point in becoming Warren Buffett rich? You have enough. So then you can buy a sports team. You could make move. You could buy a production company. You could buy restaurants. You could make hotels. You could own the world. You could own politicians. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not advocating for that. But <laughs> all I'm saying is, with that, you, with, you would run the world with that much money. Right. All right. So speaking of rich, we are going to make you rich with knowledge. Get it? That was uh, a good segue. I don't know. Uh, my, you, you said John's Christmas pun wasn't very good. That one was <laughs> okay. Good. Fine. Uh, rich with knowledge when we make because we are we're going away for a while. This is oh, our last episode of the See, season. I feel like you could have said rich with Christmas spirit. Oh, are we going on a? I'm we're going on a break That's, so for yeah, a while because. Said, um, <laughs> all right, uh, David. David's having a moment. Are we going on a um, break for the show, like a commercial, or a break, break, like uh, both? I'm confused both. right now. Too. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry. <laughs> our show. Where are we? Our show is going on what five week break. Okay, that's a lot's gonna start. happen in those five weeks. Yeah. Uh, we want to be held accountable for our um, picks, so we'll make some of those of the okay. sporting events that's gonna happen. Okay. And we're gonna take a break with uh, my number two Christmas song. See, this is why so stay tuned. You just said rich with Christmas.
knew Tim wouldn't get the message that it's Christmas songs. I knew you'd screw that up. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I can't say it. I can't say I screwed holidays. that up. This is not. It's a holiday special. It's not a. <laughs> Christmas special. It's a Jesuit school. I can say Christmas. Um, I mean, I've been on record as saying my favorite um, patriotic song is um, is the uh, Oh Canada. Canada. Oh my gosh. Oh my, oh my gosh. It just doesn't surprise me at this okay. point. This man is from Boston, and he just said that. He's going to get run out of town after that. Okay. Oh, he's from Andover. Big difference. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess. That's true. Um I don't have one of those Boston accents, which is certainly uh, which is certainly a plus. Uh, no, I, I think O Canada is a great song. I mean, if we're gonna be honest, O yeah, Canada is a great national anthem. All right, how does it I've, how does it go? I, yeah, S- I, 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 I can spit some bars of it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna <laughs> sing it right now. You might you might be able to uh, like hear me sing it later. I can right. sing let's uh, <clears throat> let's stick. I I'm sticking with uh, our national anthem, American national yeah. anthem. I like America. I like y- I like God Bless America. God Bless America hits. That's a that's a all right. It's a chill worthy song yeah. if, this, if it's anyway, sung right. Yeah, you knew <laughs> that Hanukkah song caught me off guard, but I like it, it was funny. Well yeah, it was, it was a good it was a good selection. Thank you. It was a good selection. <laughs> you just knew Tim wasn't gonna come up with three normal Christmas songs. <laughs> exactly. Of course not. Haven't heard His one. His first song was the SpongeBob one. Right, exactly. <laughs> you knew that. Uh, anyway, as Tim mentioned before the break. We are going on a more extended break, uh, so we're going to quickly do some picks about things that are going to happen as we're gone. So, so last last, last uh, prediction intro. Right. Okay. Aww. Well, let me do. Let me say this real quick before you start. It's We're going to do – we'll talk who's going to win college football because we won't be back for yeah, that. Yeah, we will not be back. And we'll do who's going to be in the NFL playoffs because we won't be back for that. But and we then, will right. be back for the Super Bowl. Yeah, yes. so we get to do the co- – and the conference championships. Oh, okay, so we'll get up until the conference Yeah, we'll pick the, who's going to be in the conference championships. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, Picks so. intro. I might miss that. And by might, I will miss that. You, you, I might bring it back, too. We know we'll you'll see. just be sitting in your room just <laughs> listening to that over yeah. and over and over again. Getting me psyched for season two. <laughs> so let's start with college football. Who will be our national champion, Phil? Uh, are we breaking down like each game? Or sure, just, yeah. Just, Who's going to win each one? Okay. Who's going to win each one? Let's just roll through them. All right. Uh, winning, all right it's uh, Clemson and Oklahoma. I have Clemson winning, uh, I think, 35-45. Um, then again, Alabama, Michigan State. I have Alabama winning. They're just going to milk the clock most of the time. And then in the national championship, it's Clemson and Alabama. Jake Coker does something stupid, costs them the game. Clemson wins. Clemson's got no chance of beating Alabama, John. They're, they're a spread team, and they have a running quarterback. You even said your exact words were that's what Clemson's kills. offense isn't that good. Sorry. Deshaun Watson's good. That's... He was a Heisman nominee. Yeah. Deshaun Watson's, Deshaun Watson's good. Everybody else, eh. Uh, no, yeah, okay. One. Anyways, so. all right. My predictions: um, Clemson, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. They're the best team in college football. They're okay. filled with NFL talent. Michigan State, Alabama, Michigan State. They frankly are just going to run themselves into a brick wall because they run the ball and they don't spread the field. Run first, pass second. Those teams just die against <sighs> Alabama. Bama wins. Uh, Oklahoma, Alabama. I like Oklahoma. They spread the field. They run. They're good. Alabama doesn't hasn't played a team with consi- a lot of NFL talent this entire season. So, Oklahoma. All right, All right. I'm taking OU over Clemson. I think, yeah, definitely Oklahoma's definitely probably the – I don't know much about college football, though. Disclaimer. Secondly, okay. Michigan State and Bama, I'm rolling with the Spartans, man. <laughs> I am loving the Spartans. I'm picking the Spartans over OU. Go Sparty. They won the Rose Bowl last season. They're winning it all this season. <laughs> that was that was mainly a shot at our friend Andy. That's, that was the point of that. <laughs> Come on. I'm rooting for that. But, yeah, anyway, I like, um, I like Oklahoma over Clemson. They're the hottest team in college football right now. Bacon Mayfield is going to be pissed about not making the Heisman. That was a joke, by the way. That was a joke. It yeah. was a joke that he didn't make it. It was a joke that Keenan Reynolds didn't make it. Yeah. Um. 
the hottest team caught they can pass. Their best defense in the Big Twelve. Um, so Oklahoma over Clemson, and I am making the upset pick with Alabama and Michigan State. I've said this time and time again. Michigan State's an experienced team. They've been down on the wire. The moment's never too big for them. And Alabama has not done anything that really, you know, they're, they haven't had an opponent like Michigan State yet. Right. Um, they have a pretty. They did have a strong schedule, but Michigan State, I think, will yeah. be their toughest point, toughest opponent yeah. yet. Tough schedule. And that's I, a. It's up to. I know. Well, well, we've talked. We've talked till our heads are blue about that all mm-hmm. season long. So I, we won't get into that now. But I think Connor Cook uh, will show up. He didn't show up against Iowa. He had a bad game against Iowa. I think he redeems himself against Alabama. Uh, and I like Oklahoma over Michigan State. I just. I'm sorry. I know. I. Uh, but they are just too good right now, and uh, they're they peaked at the right time. You know, it would be a nice it would be a nice Christmas gift if we got to see an eight team playoff because that's no. what do you mean no the best no. I mean he doesn't want an eight team playoff. I think whoever whatever team you're rooting for just doesn't want to see Ohio State because I like it at that, four. I, I really I do. Eight. I we could debate that all day long yeah, too. Sure. Um, but you know whatever. Um, and the NFL. What do we got now? Um, who, Mr. Phil Panarski, is in the NFC Championship game? NFC Championship game? Want, yeah, we'll yeah, jump into that. Uh, all right. All right. That's all right. Yeah. Let me let me think for a second. I just have who's Sorry, going in yeah, division. Just, um, all right. Yeah. Go go. F- shoot. Do divisions. Yeah. Do divisions. Yeah. Okay. Shoot that um, out. Man. Let's well, see the it. Panthers already clinched the NFC South. Ooh, I really thought the Buccaneers were gonna win that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the Panthers in the NFC South, NFC North. I have the Vikings. In the horrible NFC East, I have the Eagles. In the NFC West, I have the Cardinals. And the two wild cards are the Packers and Seahawks. You don't think that – who do you have NFC North? Sorry. Uh, Vikings. You think the Vikings – well, interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I got uh, Vikings North, uh, Panthers in the South, obviously. Mm-hmm. That's a bold one. Uh, <laughs> Cardinals in the West. And then I got the Giants. Okay. Uh, the 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 NFC is such a dumpster fire. It, it's there's bad. just there's just nothing, no way to do it. And the Giants, I interesting stat. If you take off 75 seconds of the games, they're 10 and two. And you know, good thing they don't play games 75 seconds less exactly. than they're yeah. supposed to be playing. <laughs> Eli, Eli, for as many picks and as many dumb plays as he has, he's won two Super Bowls. Right. And the, it's like. Whoever wants to win the division can, and I think the yeah. Giants might just finally be like, "All right, let's True. win it and take it." Who are your wild? And cards? then win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, part one. Uh, wild. wild cards: uh, Packers, Seahawks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, David. Pick same across the line. If I'm going to NFC Championship, I think. Well, my yeah, same across the line with Tim. I think the the only difference from Phil, I think the Giants will win the yeah. NFC East. Um, and then. NFC Championship game, I think, will be the Seahawks and the Panthers. And if the Panthers complete the undefeated season, like they go undefeated all the way through, I think that's where they lose is in the NFC Championship game. You think the Seahawks go to the Super Bowl? I think, yeah, in that right. scenario, I think, yeah. All right. Ooh. John, who do you have in the NFC? Um, everything, well, I guess I'll just run through it. Um, Panthers, obviously. Um yeah, I'll go Giants out of NFC East. I know uh, they're not looking good right now, but they're a team that plays well at the end of the season constantly. Mm-hmm. I think Packers get the North. Um, yeah, and obviously the uh, Cardinals are clinching the West. Uh, wild card out of the NFC, I see the uh, Seahawks getting it along with the Vikings. Okay. All right. Phil, did you give your NFC championship prediction? No. Um, I, I still need to go. Want me to run yeah. to the AFC real quick? No, oh. we'll just go through the NFC and then... Yeah. Oh, we're doing... Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Conference gotcha, gotcha. by Sorry. conference. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, NFC, I have the Cardinals and Panthers. Um, Pretty easy pick, I, I believe. I yeah. disagree completely because uh, <laughs> I don't right. have it. I have an NFC West battle. I have oh, okay. Arizona hosting the Seattle Seahawks because I'm with, I'm with David. I think Seattle will end up... Cause I don't think the Packers are going to win the playoff game, and I think the Seahawks are. I think the Seahawks are going to knock out. Um, they would play the four. They would play the NFC East team, and they're just worlds better. And so Seattle would end up going to Carolina, and I I just like Seattle's defense. I just do, and I think that they should have. Panthers beat the Seahawks. I know, and they should have. They should have won that game and had they had. 
Camp Chancellor, I be- he did play, I believe. Yeah, he did. But it was his first game back, if I remember correct. Mm-hmm. And they're playing better, Seattle. And if they can defend Greg Olson, game over. Right. Okay. Game over. Um, Go. Who's, who on offense can make plays other than Greg Olson? Oh, yeah, Cam Newton. Yeah, Cam, Cam I mean, MVP. Cam Newton can't make plays to himself. MVP. He's got to throw it to somebody. He's done it this entire season. He's got some great legs, actually. Yeah. <laughs> he can, he can, I think Cam Newton, Cam, Cam Newton's going to win the MVP, I think. Unless some crazy stuff it's, happens it's to the Panthers. between him and Brady. Season. And I think Brady's, I mean, Brady didn't play bad in either of the two losses. Mm-hmm. But I just think he was, the he fact that he has two losses yeah. is the big, going to be the biggest right. deciding factor. I know uh, that I, he played fantastic against yeah. the Eagles. No, he didn't. What? No, he didn't. He had what? 300, yeah, 325 he was yards. Fanta- he, he was fantastic in the end of the fourth quarter, but he was not very good. He, th- he made right. some bad plays. But at the end of the day, anyway. he had a good fantasy game. All right, mm-hmm. AFC or, uh, or which well, NFC? To, NFC, I'm going to agree with Phil. I think Panthers and Cardinals. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Panthers, they're, they're a team where you look at them and they say you don't, they don't strike fear into you. And I don't know what that is. They're, yeah. No, I. that's my point is that – they, you know, you're not worried about them, but they're they're getting it done, man. Yeah. And um, I don't know. They're just an unorthodox team. I think the way Cam Newton plays, it's something we haven't seen a team have a successful running quarterback like he is. I know he's shifted a lot this year from running, uh, really relying on his legs to being a pass first quarterback and a run, uh, running quarterback second. Right. But unorthodox team, they still get it done. They've obviously gotten to 12 and 0 for a reason. Cardinals, uh, they're flying under the radar, man. That's a good defense with uh, combined with a good, um, solid offensive attack with Carson Palmer being healthy. He's probably better after that ACL surgery, which is it's hard to believe. Modern medicine is amazing. <laughs> uh, so Cardinals-Panthers, I like that. Let's jump to the AFC. All right. Uh, in the east, obviously, you have the Patriots. Naturally. the west, you have the Broncos. The north, I'm going with the Bengals. And in the south, the Texans come back. And- I like that. Jump the Colts. And then my two wild cards are the Chiefs. They're the hottest team in the NFL right now. And David Steelers. Yes. So. Yeah, I'm I'm with you across the board. So, All right. yeah. I like that too, but I think Mr. Sando's yeah, going to make a case for the Steelers. The only change I will make, and it starts with a win at Paul Brown Stadium for, for Ben Roethlisberger today. But if they win, that pulls them within two games of the division. And There's three to play, David. Well, yeah, the Bengals have three to play. I think the Steelers are they are going to have to win out if they want to make the playoffs in any case. Because I don't know about they're that. They're tied with the Jets and the Chiefs. The Jets Chiefs, are horrible. The Chiefs are going to win out. Yeah, but all the Jets have to do is put together a couple wins, and it's like it's a – but anyway, one of Andy Dalton's remaining games after tonight is a primetime game. <laughs> and if we know anything about Andy Dalton – it is that he loves no he hates primetime <laughs> in primetime he is two and six with a 60 percent completion percentage not that bad he averages 216 yards but he has eight touchdowns and nine interceptions he beats himself in primetime games so and that's in denver right. so that's an that's a loss for them then they have a game at san francisco which san francisco doesn't pose really any threat other than the fact that if the steelers can rattle him up enough this weekend there's potential for the Niners to get one of those weird oh, NFL oh. wins that's been happening. Um, so, yeah, I think – and then they finish zero, out zero – 0.0 zero chance the Bengals don't oh, win the debate. The Bengals finish out with Baltimore, and that's a rivalry game, and you can never discount a true rival game. Baltimore's certain Jimmy Clausen at quarterback It doesn't matter. Week. It's a – all bets are off. It doesn't matter. So, I think – False. If, that is if not If the Steelers real. win today, and if they win, they're going to win commandingly. They're not going to win by a score. They're, if they win, they win today. Mm-hmm. If they win today, they win the division, and that's what I'll say. All right, that's what I'll. That say. is that is ludicrous, but John. But I will say, yeah, wild cards, Chiefs, and an AFC North team. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, David, for that hot take. Um, I like the stat though with Andy Dalton. I like how you brought you brought numbers, you brought you backed up your case. I love it. They don't have to agree with it, but he backed that up. Um, anyway, uh, I yeah I. Pretty much agree with everyone. That's really exciting, isn't it? Um, I could see the Steelers jumping the Bengals. Andy Dalton finds a way to choke all the time. Yeah, yeah. Gonna, I don't think they're going to lose well, four games in a row. 
It, no, they won't lose. They don't have to lose four. They just have to lose two of them. Yeah. Because if the Steelers win by enough, they the lose Steelers three. Have to head to head. They, no, they lose Steelers, three. The Steelers right. have to win. If they out. lose today, they if, have. sorry. If they <laughs> if they lose today, then they have to lose two more out of the last three, because at the tiebreaker, if the Steelers win today, they're going to win by a lot, and the Bengals won by six. Yeah. So they'll have the yeah. tiebreaker in that. In those. Uh, in that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Championship game. A- AFC Championship. Patriots Broncos. Oh, dude, I didn't hear that. Sorry. Oh no, 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 I didn't say it, but I, it, it oh, okay. seems kind of obvious. I don't know why you're saying this stuff so obvious. They're the two best teams in the AFC. Oh, I don't know. Um, if you agreed with me on the board, who else else in the playoffs? Is it the Texans? Is it the Bengals? No, it's Pittsburgh. It's the Pittsburgh. Yeah, oh, Steelers. That's what I like, baby. High yeah. offense. I mean, okay. What my my championship game is New England and Pittsburgh, and I think. The biggest, the biggest thing about it being New England and Pittsburgh is that I don't think the Patriots are going to get the number one seed, and therefore they're going to lock out and get the Bengals, who are going to be the three, as opposed to playing the Steelers, who are going to have to go to Denver, and I think they'll win at, at mile high. We got to redeem ourselves for the <laughs> Tim Tebow. <laughs> I would, I would love. I would love a Steelers Patriots AFC. I think that's what's gonna happen That'd be because awesome. Because I think it those would be awesome. Oh, David, we would have a battle. I don't know. I we I would, mean, oh man, this might sound crazy, and I don't really have much to back it up. But I think they're the two best teams in the AFC, even more than Denver. I'm not sold on uh, Osweiler, and I don't know about if Peyton I'm not Manning's sold. Alive. That's my thing is, if Peyton Manning comes back. Then yeah, I'd probably say Pittsburgh would meet New England in the AFC Championship. But Brock Osweiler is a much better quarterback right now than Peyton Manning is. So if he stays yeah, in, yeah. then Brock I have Osweiler to deserves to start. I right. Think. And I I would I, I think it'd be I would if John Elway started Peyton Manning when he gets back. I that would be BS, <laughs> man. That okay. I will say good news for you guys. My but. knock on the wood pick is the Steelers just because bias I don't and I don't want to mess this up I don't want to jinx this but I right. think I hope that the Steelers don't play the Pats in the AFC championship because we have I don't think we've ever beaten the Patriots in the playoffs <laughs> so I don't want to do that I would much rather and I think what's going to happen is we're going to go to Denver for the I don't know how the seating is going to work how that's all going to line up yeah they, but I think we would if if we play whoever we play first like Denver or the Patriots is kind of like that w- I think that'd be our last game of the right. playoffs. They, they beat the Patriots in, I don't remember exactly the year. All I know is when they won, when it's been a while. When they the Cardinals I believe it was Super Bowl, ni- wasn't it? I be- no, I believe it was ninety five. See, it's uh, not even in the Tom Brady era. Yeah, that's Belichick our Brady that's era. our thing is Belichick and Brady. Well, it was beat us. it was um, Mike Vrabel got a strip sack that turned into a touchdown, and they won the game. Like I want to say it was like nine to three. Dad, if you're listening, please text me the details. <laughs> I know you will. So, um, yeah. All right, John, go ahead. You know, I – see, here's the thing. With Denver, their defense is – we've talked about it – very good. Right. Very good. <laughs> A healthy Pittsburgh, you can't overlook. Pittsburgh, are they going to remain healthy for the next three weeks? I mean, Ben's been in and out of the lineup. Don't, don't start saying these uh, Obviously, Le'Veon Bell isn't going to be there. You don't know. Um. The Bengals are a hot team, but they they find a way to lose in the playoffs. Right. Could this be their year? No. I don't know. They're the same no. old Bengals. The the only yeah. thing about the Steelers that if if the Steelers are healthy, the only thing you have to be worried about is the secondary. The secondary right. gives no, up yeah. way too many passing yards. Secondary did a great job last week, though. Yeah, last the Colts. Week. They definitely so, did. A, they did pretty well. They did a fantastic job against 400 year old Matt Hasselbeck. Yes, I- <laughs> True, <laughs> granted, but I think Hasselback's done not a bad job. Oh yeah, no, he's done a great job. Nonetheless, I, I'm gonna go Patriots Steelers. I, I, like it. I think Osweiler gets rattled in the first playoff game. Right. Um, I mean, Patriots will beat the Steelers. That's not a question. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we'll we'll break that down when the time comes. <laughs> yeah. There's um, a there's a lot of football, Patriot football I gotta watch before I'm I'm, on, the uh, Patriots. Beating the Steelers. See, I just Gronk yeah. and Edelman will be back by playoff time. Hopefully, so. yeah. The thing with the Patriots is they've got so much depth that it doesn't worry me. I think <laughs> Bill knows how to plug these guys in. And uh, I don't know why you're saying that. Uh, who play? <laughs> I mean, the depth. They're the, de- oh, what at wide receiver? Brad LaFell. Okay, at w- wide receiver. They. I mean, <laughs> they have depth at wide receiver, but literally every wide receiver has gotten hurt. Right. I mean, no, they don't. They 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 have no depth at wide receiver. Their depth Edelman goes down. They have Amendola. I mean, that's that's you, it. 
Well, that's my point, though. I mean, you go down, you lose your number one wide receiver, you still have a guy that's going to step up and make good plays for you. And now you have to throw the ball to Keyshawn Martin. Right. I mean, you don't expect you don't expect Brandon LaFell, who can't play receiver in the NFL. I mean, you don't expect. I think LaFell, you're you're making LaFell out worse. You're making LaFell seem worse than he really he's, is. John, he's horrible. He's he is terrible. He's played hey, decent he's terrible. this year. No, he hasn't. He's been awful. He's awful. I don't know what game you're watching okay. if you think Brandon LaFell has played well. He's a D. I don't know. Let, let's pull up. I don't, all right, we're not going to have a debate about he how. Dropped, he's dropped more balls than he's caught. I, uh, he played horrible that first game, and I think that's what's and sticking out in your mind. He played horrible last week. He was awful last week. All right. Well, you know what? He's still, I would take him. I'm. He's better than some of the. I'm sticking by my guys, and he's better than some of the other guys I've seen Brady throw the ball to in recent years. No way, but okay. All right. Um, I, I, I think we should watch the film together. We'll see. We'll break down I, the I film. See, yeah, I want to see what you think is a good play we'll by we'll Brandon Bell. We'll have a film session. Um, uh, anyway. Um, I think we're to my number one Christmas song. We're at your number one Christmas song. All right, All right stay tuned. Hopefully, it's Christmas. It is, it is, it is actually Christmas. All right, stay tuned after the break for our Christmas breakdown. Thank you. 
there you have it. Moral of the story, never put Tim in charge yeah. of the holiday party. Tim is not the Christmas DJ. Don't let Tim be your Christmas <laughs> DJ. All right, Three so. Three just non-holiday songs. Just What are you talking about? That wasn't a holiday. The song's literally his Merry Christmas in the title. It's just, I mean, the it's a parody song. The only Christmas song was the SpongeBob one. Yeah. And that's How is that not a Christmas that song? That's even debatable because right. it's like, it's SpongeBob. That's Sponge debatable, Bob. yeah. How is that not a Christmas song? I don't get it. Like, wh- what's your definition of a Christmas song? I mean, anything but that, literally. Oh, that's Christmas a song? that's a good segue. Do that. You want to hear what oh, we think no, of first, Christmas let's, let's, yeah. first of all, oh, um, okay. I got my the resource known as my father uh, came right. through again. Uh... 1997, and I was a little bit off. It was uh, pay- Steelers won seven to six, and Drew Bledsoe was sacked by Mike Vrabel in the final minute, causing a fumble and a turnover. And Vrabel was a Steeler. Yes, I did not know that. Yeah, he was. And your guy, Pete Carroll, was the uh, head coach. Interesting. Before we jump into um, Christmas songs and show recap and Christmas. Everything else, fun movies and presents, presents. and all, movies. all that. You guys bashing stuff. my uh, my Christmas yeah, selections. Christmas atrocious. Like oh yeah, his Christmas <laughs> movies. I don't even know what his Christmas. Eight days. What's the Adam Sandler Hanukkah? Eight crazy nights. Eight crazy nights. That's, That's a great Christmas movie, movie, but it has nothing to do nothing with Christmas. Christmas. Anyway, I want to do two quick shout outs. Three quick shout outs uh, to some of our loyal listeners. Uh, one, one of my. Good friends, neighbors from back home. Joe Papalardo has been a loyal listener week in and week Joe. out. Actually, he texted me and said he texted me last week and said, "John, shows aren't up. Where are they? I want to listen." And so he's been a, a loyal listener. He's you know he listens to uh, our podcasts and whatnot. So Joe, thank you for the love. Uh, really appreciated. Second is to my nana who's listening right now. Brothers Restaurant in Wakefield, Massachusetts. I don't know if you're familiar with Brothers yeah. Tim. Uh, I can't wait to see you in nine day uh, less than that in a week. Uh, Nana, I look forward to finally getting Aww. to see you again. Yeah, I miss you. Aww. I love you. I uh, will see you soon. And third to my dad, of course, for listening every week. Love you too, Dad. I will see you soon. Oh, are these? Can we do so. season thank yous? Sure, let's do yeah, season right. thank yous right now. This is the spirit of giving. <laughs> all right. Uh, number one, obviously, I got to thank my dad. Listens every week. Most of the time, texts me. At the beginning, it was mostly uh, he texted me like, great show and they tell me something that he completely disagreed with (laughs) uh and now he's my uh resource guy telling me about the patriots and steelers playoff games and uh the boston marathon qualifying times and uh yeah he's i i appreciate i appreciate that and uh always listening and um i would like to thank my mother too she listens (laughs) And my mother and my grandmother, because they're not the biggest sports people, but they always listen to the show. And my grandmother, I talked to her yesterday. She said, "Make sure, uh, make sure you get the, make sure you get the, um, the show online, because I got a lot of rapping to do, and I want to listen. I want to listen to." Um, Nothing gets you in the holiday spirit like War of Civility. <laughs> I, I mean, I was like, yeah, I was sort of taken aback. Spins, come on, of course. Yeah. So I will thank them, and then um, some of my, some of my friends who I uh, every time I see them on Facebook at like nine in the morning, I always message them. I'm like, listen to the show. So uh, I did that today to my buddy Steve. Hopefully you're listening. So there's your shout out. Shout out to uh, his girlfriend Tina, who also might be listening because he turned it on and she was sleeping apparently. So <laughs> thanks for listening. Oh, my shout outs. Um. Just uh, oh, and shout out to uh, Phil's Phil's uh, Phil's girlfriend Hannah. Yeah, I know she's God, always shout listening. Out. Yeah, Phil, yeah, you're gonna get in trouble for that one. Yeah, you didn't give me time I, I, to I shout her out. Gotta, all right, I'll, I'll give I'll give Phil. I I I jumped him on that one because I, <laughs> I I feel knew. like Phil's got to jump the gun there though. If he if he really cares I about said, Hannah, uh, he's got to jump the gun. I, there. I said ah. Uh, <laughs> Phil, Phil's not the aggressive type. I said ah. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just trying to put Phil do- in the doghouse. All right. Shout out to Hannah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it, too. You took, like, two seconds, and I was going to say it. <laughs> but I let you out. Um, yeah, another shout out to my dad for consistently texting me, good show, I give it a B every show. <laughs> and then uh, another shout out for my little brother who w- listens to it with my dad and then Snapchats me after every show and says, you suck. So. <laughs>
That's, That's always motivational. Do you have any thank yous? My my season's thank yous are to all of you, Aww. to John, to Phil, to Tim, for letting me participate <laughs> and uh, talk out of my out of my rear on a sports show. Um, and then my buddy Rick listened one time, but because I'm from the West Coast, it's 7 a.m. when the show starts, <laughs> and people are not waking up at 7 a.m. on a Sunday. Right. Not, not, even, not even for us? Not, even, not quite. <laughs> one time he did. One time. Hey, shout out to Rick for that. <laughs> All right. Well, feels good to thank, give thanks, and um, I guess give back. <laughs> what? It's the season of giving. Way. Season what of a weird giving. way. Well, it's not Thanksgiving, so it's not like giving thanks. I was trying to tie it together, put a bow on it. More Christmas things. Just whack my mic. Okay. Um, <laughs> top three favorite. Are we doing movies first? You want to do songs Christmas first? movies? Okay, you want to do songs so first because we just heard Tim. Sure. All right. We know all Tim's right. favorite. So my recap in case uh, okay. in case you're just tuning in. In case, case you're just, you're just tuning. tuning in. Well, I know. I think my um, my friend Steve turned it tuned in at about about halfway, so he missed the first one. Right. So um, number three was SpongeBob SquarePants, um, a very first Christmas featuring Patrick uh, and Squidward. Yeah, and Squidward. I think Plankton was in it. Yeah, uh, Mr. Maybe, Krabs. Yeah, Mr. Krabs. Um, <laughs> the then whole number gang. two, number two, we had the Hanukkah song, and then uh, number one, Merry Christmas! Exclamation point. Yeah. And then press and <laughs> Um, yeah, no, my number three Christmas song was um oh what did I put? I erased it now I'm upset. Anyways. Um uh, my number two Christmas song is Last Christmas. Tim brought it up to me today and I completely agreed. Uh, that's like Christmas that's like I gave you my heart. <laughs> And and then, uh, I'll I'll try to erase that from my memory. Yeah. Your little your little jam. Oh, sesh. number three is uh, White Christmas. That's it. I okay. like that one. And then number one is Cold December Night by Michael Bublé. That's a fantastic <laughs> Christmas Bublé song. Just, His uh, entire Christmas album is Frank. historic. I mean, those are the two Christmas number right. one, Drummer Boy by Justin Bieber. Oh. Yes. I'm just kidding. I'm, yes. just kidding. I just yes. to see I'm completely <laughs> kidding about that. I, that was just for Tim. Yes. <laughs> he almost killed me. There was, there was, no, no, I didn't. He gave me the death look. Anyway, here's my thing with. No, I, I mean I would I would have let that fly. Oh, okay. I mean it's 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 on par with Phil going with Last Christmas by <laughs> Wham, <is>. but <laughs> he called it Wham Christmas this morning. It's the same thing. <laughs> um, I the, my pro I never know the titles of Christmas songs. Like I always just hear them and I'm like, oh, that's one of it. that's one of the good ones. But I think I I Googled it. I'm not gonna lie. I can, <laughs> um, I guess in no particular. I I think White Christmas. Which, what does that one sound like? like um, I'm dreaming yeah, that's of a white much Christmas. singing on this episode. Love it. Just I guess that's... like the ones yeah. I used to know. Love it. Love it. That's <laughs> yep. That's one of my favorites. We just sing constantly. <laughs> um, Santa Claus coming to town. Springsteen. That's a good, that's a good one. That's, a good, that's one. a good one. That almost made the list. That was almost number one, but then I realized it didn't fit the theme. <laughs> yeah. Then he realized it was an actual Christmas song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Can't yeah, I can't do that. And then what's the, uh, I guess I have, <laughs> all I want, Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas okay. is a classic. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, that, that's in my bottom three of Christmas songs I can't stand. That song is awful. Uh, I went to the acapella and concert last night. How and was they, that? They, they, it was okay. <laughs> and I, I've liked their other concerts a lot more, but they, they did one, they did uh, Mariah Carey. Wow. Carey's. Um. And um, putting them on blast. Jeez. Yeah, hey, it's okay. Well, um, I said I liked it. Yeah, I complimented their other concerts. Yeah. Okay. It's hard. Um, it's hard to do. And Christmas then my songs. last one is the Frank. What's the Frank Sinatra one? There's a lot of them. Yeah. He, oh, he, he's like Michael Bublé, and he. I like, don't know. One of his. I forget which one it is. It's one of those. If I heard it, I'd be like, I like it, but it's by. Him. You can't okay. go wrong with Frank. All right. My uh. So top three. Okay. First, I'll start mm -hmm. off. My favorite Christmas albums are Bu are Bublé and Sinatra. Oh yeah. I think they do a great job. I love, the, yeah, the music behind those, I think, is better than even the voices. But um, Frank Sinatra, Let It Snow, one of my that's, tops. That's, that's what it is, I think. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one I wanted. Okay, okay that's the one you, you wanted? You didn't know the title okay. of Let It Snow? Okay. okay. The, the chorus that's literally, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow. You couldn't pull and, the and title I'll that go, maybe it was Let It Snow. <laughs> I'll go uh, Jingle Bell Rock. By the ensemble of Mean Girls, that I love. <laughs> that's that one. that's also that's also creeping into my bottom. Three. That's oh, I love that one. And then finally, there's this new one. I don't know if you've heard it, but if you have, <laughs> it is Santa Tell Me by Ariana Grande, or Grande. I don't know which way to say it. I always say Grande, but it's Grande. Um, she's like the drink. I and I made the joke. So the song is essentially Santa Tell Me If You're Real, 
is essentially the basis of the song. And so the funniest thing is I go, this is believable because she herself is like 12 years old. So <laughs> she probably still does believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> if you don't believe, I mean, if heart. you don't believe in Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, Santa is totally real in case there's anybody who believes in Santa Claus. Okay. Um. I still believe in Santa because I Santa's awesome. He's yeah, I Santa mean is awesome. he's kind of a baller. If kind we're gonna be baller. honest, like he's the a guy, free NBA free agent. You see that yeah, commercial? Yeah. yeah, that was that commercial confused me a little bit. Yeah, but, it was uh, a weird, weird commercial. commercial. Yeah, no, but but Santa Santa is Santa's so clutch. Like I mean, the guy goes to everybody's house, delivers presents, and eats cookies. Like yeah, that's pretty awesome. Pretty good job. Yeah, good gig. Top three favorite Christmas movies. Or specials, because Tim doesn't like Christmas movies. No, no, Phil. All right, you guys are making me seem like you guys are making me you seem like Grinch. I'm Ebenezer Scrooge. You played like, a Hanukkah song in your top. Three. That's because I'm hilarious. You're a Grinch. <laughs> that's because I'm hilarious. <laughs> that happened. No, I mean, okay, I don't really watch all that many movies. All right. And well, if I'm gonna watch a movie, I'm probably not gonna watch a Christmas movie. Like, not even just, during the month well, of December. Then, well, then, do you want to pick Christmas movies? No, I, yeah. you guys can pick Christmas movies. Go for it. You guys are making me seem like well, I hate that's, why I said, that's why I said Christmas movies slash specials. So you could do your specials. I mean, I like, yeah, I mean, I just don't, I like watching specials because they're like shorter. Here's the thing. Okay. Me and Phil are going to make our Christmas movie and Tim's just going to be like, oh, how could you pick that? But it's like, he doesn't like watch the Christmas movies. <laughs> exactly. So I, no, I mean, the Christmas, the Christmas songs you picked were like, were, I mean, they were kind of weak. I mean, the Mariah Carey, oh, it's a that classic. song's horrible. That's like one of the top played. Are you the way she belts out that first you? No, it's one of those feel good songs. It's, it's a good song. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> All right, maybe that's one that a little undoes it on me. Now that I think about it. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining the the smart I'll put, team. I'll yeah. I'll cross out now. That's put, only because I started singing. Yeah. Once you started singing, I was yeah. Okay. Anyway, Phil, what are your top three movies? Um, number three, Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase. Love that movie. I haven't seen that. Can you it's, believe that? I saw so, the ending. There is okay. one part that makes me laugh every single time, and it's when the in-laws are at the door, and the doorbell rings. It's ding dong. And it does that for like 15 times, and then all of a sudden it goes dun dun. Like evil's coming. Oh, it's so John, funny. don't feel bad. That I, That's one of my... I a lot of people like it. Uh-huh. There's a there's definitely an appeal. There's a yeah. There's a, there, I, that is not... I don't like that one. Oh, that really? Much. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I, this is the first time I've heard that. Yeah. All right, uh, number two is Elf. With Great job. Will Ferrell. Great movie. Round of applause. Round of applause for and that then one, yeah. number one, I, I like Elf is a lot funnier, I'll say, than this movie. But the f- I, TBS plays A Christmas Story. A Christmas Story is my number one movie. Okay. But okay. The, TBS plays it for 24 hours straight. Wow. I watch it for about 10 hours. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> I like Christmas Story. I don't love it. Uh-huh. Top three for me, I, I know, I guess we can do Elf. At three, at one. Okay. I, I don't know. Nice I went job. one to three. Uh, no, yeah, I love Elf. It's a it's a classic. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet this year. Um, I need to watch it. Um, son of a nutcracker. I need to watch that. Movie. Uh, <laughs> cotton headed. <laughs> well, I'm just a cotton headed ninny. Oh, thing just drops. Yeah. Everyone just stops. <laughs> so many good quotes in that movie. Oh, it's so good. Um, two, I, I like Home Alone. I think that's a classic. See, that's a song. That's a movie I don't like. You don't like Home Alone? No, I do not like okay. it. Okay. Uh, Home Alone 1. 2's not bad. 3 stunk. <laughs> classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> classic three movies. And then uh, number three, Miracle on 42nd Street. It's a classic. All right. Haven't seen Miracle. Haven't seen Christmas Story. So, with that in mind, <laughs> we'll start off number three with Santa Claus 2. With Tim Allen? With Tim Allen. All right. Uh, first I just want to – hold on, hold on a second. You go. Hold on a second. I just have to cut you off because I don't want to do – um, don't want to seem like we're bad Christmas people. But uh, the movie John, – John's favorite Christmas movie is actually Miracle on 34th Street, okay. not 42nd Street. Nope. It's okay. How are you supposed – there's like one on 49th Street. Yeah. There's a million. Nope. There's, Thank there you there for are that. miracles every street. I get that wrong every – I was going to – I'm not going to lie. Before I said that, I was debating whether it was 42nd or 22nd. I couldn't remember. <laughs> I, I knew it was a miracle on a street in New York. I could tell you the premise miracle of on it. 18th at O'Donnell. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> miracle on North 18th, 725 North 18th Street. Mir- you know what my miracle on uh, North, North uh, 18th Street is? Getting to go home and not having to be in the in a dorm, being in the dorm room <laughs> any longer. Nice. I can't wait. That's gonna be nice. You, Wake, you leaving? leaving in I'm your leaving, own. Uh, waking up in your own bed. Yeah. John, in case you couldn't, the mic didn't pick it up. John asked when I was leaving Tuesday night. Nice. Yeah. 
yeah. Wednesday night over here. Saturday. Saturday. So, yeah, so number three was Santa Claus 2. Because Santa Claus, the first one with Tim Allen, I feel like he's not Santa Claus long enough. And that's, like, my favorite part is when Tim Allen's Santa Claus. He's my favorite Santa Claus, BT Dubs. I All right. Who else? Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> Paul Giamatti played one that I watched last night. I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, second favorite is the Polar Express. Okay. That's a good one. I feel like it animated and so good. I feel like it for an animated it's like it could be Pixar. That's how good it is like in terms of the animation All right. and just how how great it makes I you feel. Like that story. Great. And you know, Tim or uh uh shoot. Tom Hanks, there's his name. Yeah. Great job. Anything Tom Hanks is in gets right. a win. And then number 1, yes. The funniest I I put it in Will Ferrell's top 3 movies overall. Oh yeah. Probably. Elf. I would. love Elf. I, I will great I mean, movie. I can't really bash Elf that much, but I wouldn't put it in Will Ferrell's See, top. See, here's three. a reason though. Anchorman reason being, is number one. Mm, Maybe old school. No, I go. Oh, my favorite Will Ferrell movie, Talladega Nights. Are you kidding me, oh, Ricky Bobby? So All right, Ricky I mean, Bobby. I gotta on. go. I gotta go. Anchorman, probably Step Brothers, and then. Talladega Nights is good. I'd go Talladega number one, Step Brothers, and then I'd put Elf in there. Because Elf, he has to play such a ridiculous right. character with regular people. And, like, it's like, how can yeah, you I mean, keep that up the entire movie? And Elf, be is so like, funny. Elf, Elf is, like, silly funny, though. That's yeah, sort but of, it's, like, what it's his just, humor is. It's hilarious. But like, here's the, the reason. The other movies are very funny. <sighs> that one is very funny, too, because he's is, so it is innocent. funny, but it's, it's silly funny. But in terms of, like, what he had to do in that movie, yeah. because in... The thing with Anchorman, old school, tell day, it's just it's just raunchy, raunchy humor, which is hilarious. Right, it's easy comedy. It's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, don't get yeah. me wrong. Tell day and nights has some of the best quotes. It's just right. like, what? <laughs> um, but yeah, I but mean, Elf he had to act for for a grown man, for a six five grown man to stand in a full Elf outfit <laughs> and call Peter Dinklage <laughs> an Elf takes. An acting pedigree I don't know exists in any other place. I think that yeah. is one of the top five moments of movie history. Right. It's like, no. call me Elf one more time. Yeah. He's an angry. He must be a South Pole Elf. Yeah, he's or whatever. an angry Elf. He's an angry Elf. <laughs> um, I don't know. I I might. I think I. I don't know if I'm ranking my favorite uh, Will Ferrell movies. It's it's it for me. It's the other guys with Mark Wahlberg. Oh, that's the other guys is great. That's a great. That's one, one yeah. of those movies where the first time I saw it, I was like, that that wasn't funny. Yeah. yeah. Watched watch it again. Like a, there was a lot of subtle. I'm humor a peacock. In you gotta let me fly. Right. A lot of subtle humor. In there. Yeah. Then Anchorman. Oh, and then I don't know if you guys ever saw Running with Scissors. No, I didn't even hear of that. Oh, it's a it's it's a kind of more dramatic, right. but he has a he has a couple. Yeah, ones. he does a Science couple. Science fiction is another one, right? Where he's... I like I like semi pro. That one's great. Oh yeah. He just got a good. He's got a good. He's got a good, he's got a good repertoire. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I don't just I mean, it's not like you put Step Brothers in your top three. It's like yeah, I mean, that's yeah, a classic. Cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can't. <laughs> Oh, Land of the Lost was really funny too. I hate Land of the Lost. Oh, that movie was funny. That. It looks so dumb. It All was, right, it was really. Dumb. I got a little. I got a breaking news story. My yeah. buddy uh, Steve just sent me a Snapchat and said that you guys are giving Elf too much credit. Really? Oh, man, Steve. Really? And here's my thing with your Polo Express. Good, good story. Pretty good movie. Something about it all just creeped me out. Like, yeah, I didn't like Polar Express that much. It does have a. Scary and there's a creepy deal. twist to it. Right, but I think, come on, this is a this is a magical man who travels all across the world in one night. He's got to have a little bit of. But it's got to be an imposing figure, like the, you know. The hobo on top of the train creeps yeah, me out a little bit. Creepy. The conductor's a little I creepy. Think, I, but it's so. I, I think it's great. That's. But come on, you can't give Elf enough credit, Steve. Elf is great, man. Elf is come fantastic. On. Elf is great. Go rewatch Elf. Here's probably why he hates Elf is because ABC Family beats it to death. You can't. That's watch true. It. That is definitely true. And you hundred percent. And you can't watch it. And on I I agree. I agree with that. Elf Elf does does get too much. You can't credit. watch they movies on it. cable. They bleep it out and they have commercials. Yeah. You can't do it. And you Elf is like the thing with Elf is everyone's like oh Elf like. Everyone if, freaks out about it. Yeah, too. If yeah. Nobody, if people didn't freak out about Elf, it would be a million times better for yeah, me, at least. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I got a little slot skimped on my my specials. Right. Okay. I'm a specials Tim's guy. Tim special. Tim specialty. All right. <laughs> at number three. <laughs> at number three, we got the American Dad special. Oh my God. <laughs> the episode where um, where this uh, Santa tries to kill the Smiths. Classic. Um, number two, the SpongeBob, very first Christmas, and uh, number one. I got Futurama. 
you don't even have Charlie Brown in there. Oh, okay. It's that's those are my t those are my TV <laughs> things. Those Brown. are my TV. I got I got other ones with where like actually Christmas. But no, the episode where the um they put Bender on trial for being Santa is like the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, but in terms of like actual specials, my favorite far and away is Grinch. Great. Okay. That is, that's yeah. Great. Grinch, I, I, I mean, that's a movie. Jim Carrey and the animated Wait, the No, Jim no, the, the animated one. Oh, that's really? still a movie. Okay, I mean, it's like it's like a half hour long. Doesn't surprise. Mm -hmm. Tate loves the movie. Loves the movie where yeah. the, the Grinch. The Grinch is a there, right? great movie. He identifies with, I he watch identifies it. with the character. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know how I get pumped up for uh, Christmas? I watch that on Christmas. You go Eve. steal little kids' <laughs> presents. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I sit down on on Christmas Eve and I watch it. And then I hear the line, like, tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. And I'm like, all right, like, let's get in the Christmas spirit. So and you don't get into the Christmas spirit until two. Christmas Eve. Uh, maybe the 23rd. Oh, uh, <laughs> Probably the 24th, though. Quick, <laughs> so Christmas Eve. <laughs> yeah. Quick shout out to my mom for just texting me a bunch about uh, different Will Ferrell movies that she likes. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, kicking, and sc kicking and Screaming. Oh, okay, that's, oh a, that's a great one. Kicking and Screaming's all right. That's, that's, a, great that's, that's, that's a great one. That is low-key a great one. The Mike when, Ditka cameo. When we are, okay, fantastic. yeah. When we are all, like, adults and have kids, we're going to appreciate that movie oh, yeah. so much more. Uh, great movie. Great concept, too. She has like. Nine at the Roxbury. Great. That's, that's a good one. Classic. And then Hannah texted me uh, that Get Hard was good. I but I, I, I like that. Get Hard. That one was funny. Steve? Notorious Steve says, Notorious uh, Steve. <laughs> kicking and screaming, hugely underrated. Yes, yeah. Yes, I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of with. We're not giving old school enough credit. Either. I'm on the oh, fence yeah. with kicking okay, and screaming. Only... Kicking and screaming is so good. I don't think old it school. It depends on the day whether or not I think it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I think old school is more a Vince Vaughn and Luke Wilson movie yeah. than a Will Ferrell. I think right. Will Ferrell's an ensemble. He's in it. He's. It's not a Will Ferrell movie. I mean, no. he's, he's the main guy in the poster. Frank the Tank, man. I know Frank the Tank, but the movie. Okay, the. the, the um, What's the word? I'm thinking the He's a the main character. character. What is it? The antagonist yeah. or the protagonist? Protagonist. I don't know. protagonist is Luke Wilson. And then Vince Vaughn is huge. But Luke Wilson Will is Ferrell is like a bit he's Frank the Tank. That's like a bit role. But like okay, that's fair. I, I wouldn't guess, yeah, I wouldn't Luke I, Wilson I agree with isn't though. funny in that though. I mean, Vince Vaughn's... Luke... Is it Owen Wilson? Jason... No, it's, no, Luke, Wilson. it's Luke, Luke Wilson, Wilson in that movie. Yeah. It's Luke Wilson in that movie. He's... An actor named Yeah, Wilson. yeah. Um, <laughs> well, okay. Paul Rudd isn't really never funny in his movies, but he has some great comedies. And oh, Paul, Jason... Paul Rudd and Anchorman is great. Jason yeah, Bateman isn't Anchor, really... It's not a Paul yeah, Rudd it's not movie. a Paul Rudd movie. And Jason Bateman isn't that funny in the movies that he's in, but he still has... Horrible Bosses is one of my... That's one of my favorite comedies of mm -hmm. all time. And Jason Bateman is like the serious, like... No, I'm not funny character, yeah. you know. I think the big thing about yeah, kicking I mean, and screaming that I like is that his brother is the same age as his son. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> I have no idea why. That's just so funny. I love the Italian. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. I want to watch it now. Yeah. That is a Oh, that's a great I movie. I haven't seen that one in a while. That's a great movie. I always just remember the scene so where they come out of like, they have to help the kids at like yeah, the butcher shop the and they're just <laughs> covered in blood. Oh, uh, one of our kids forgot his socks. <laughs> Run! Don't look back! <laughs> Classic. Um, but... Oh man, I was having a discussion about old school last night with someone, and I just, I was, oh, I was reliving yeah. that movie, and it's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> There's some great, a lot of funny parts. great yeah. parts in that movie. A lot of funny parts. Just I, <laughs> I always wanted to cheat like that with the little, the, the headset in. That's how I always <laughs> dreamed of high school. So Someone's it's finals week at Marquette, and that's <laughs> how David's gonna. <laughs> 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 um, but okay, let's do this. Um, this is our last show. Mm -hmm. Favorite moments from the show. This semester. Oh, uh, this is going to be really, really specific. Okay. And um, I don't know why this is my favorite moment, but when Phil, when Phil, Phil made a line about um, Jacob Degrom. Jesus, this is the third show in a row. We brought <laughs> this up. He goes, he goes, um, like Jacob Degrom looks nervous, and I have like the sound run of the year. I was like, uh, I was like, what are you talking about? And John was on him too. It was, it was, it was great. Okay, how do you pitch in the World Series? Thank you. Anyway. Uh, I don't, I don't recall. Favorite moment, John? Um, I don't, I all of them. Yeah, exactly. It's been so much. It, it's, it's been, been a good fun. time, man. Um, I, I can't. Uh, there's been some good. Well, I think maybe my favorite moment came last week when. 
Phil said he supported the three fists compromise. Oh, my God. Yeah. oh that, that oh, was just never mind. Oh. Get rid of the DeGrom thing, that one. Easily, easily, far and away. Uh, best best was... line. Best line of all Sorry, time. Sorry, Phil, but, like, that was just, that was priceless. Uh, I know what you meant, yeah. but it was just. It came out wrong. Just came out wrong, and those are the moments we live for um, in the radio business. <laughs> that was great. Phil, this is your chance to get back at us. I know we had some ridiculous lines. Um. I guess two big moments was when Tim was trying to advocate of the Big 12 being one of the better conferences. Oh, uh, it is. And then me and John just jumped on you. I thought that was pretty Yeah, good. you guys are wrong. So, like, knuckle touch all you want, but you guys are wrong. Yeah. When well, Oklahoma wins the Baylor Nash- lost to Texas. When, o- when Oklahoma, Oklahoma, win- Oklahoma when, lost to Texas. When Oklahoma wins the national one, championship. One team is the entire conference. All right, we'll get back. We'll anyways, get, anyways, anyways, anyways. We'll anyways, 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 anyways Tim's about to jump over the table. Anyways. Yeah, that, that, is, that was the most outrageous guys, we're trying argument. to end the show on a high note. Let's yeah, not no, that was the most outrageous comment you two have had the whole season that that's you don't just think not about. true but no okay. it, it i yeah. mean true you've said more outrageous things <laughs> we have not but that we was that's it up they bananas. don't play, they don't play yeah. defense in that conference yeah. except Phil, what's your next the movie? second moment yeah, the only team that the plays second defense. moment was the show right before thanksgiving when john yeah, said he likes his this. mom's buns yeah, oh, that oh classic Phil, phil's carrots oh my god that was great too that was Phil, what's your favorite thanksgiving food carrots number three it was number three carrots like just carrots out of a bag or like a they're made they're, special. They're, they're baby carrots, they and you, you boil you boil baby carrots, okay. and you put a stick of butter and brown sugar oh, in them. And yeah, those sweet. type of they're basically like yams. Yeah, yeah. but but the, but but the he said he did. We can fill. I favorite. should have explained he it better. Did, he My just bad. Said carrots. <laughs> <laughs> it was that great. Was awesome. Yeah. No, I get what I. Yeah, carrots. <laughs> I get what you mean. <laughs> Carrots. <laughs> he just goes, He's like, I don't eat the we just looked at him like, just gives me a bag of carrots. like, do you not have carrots the other 364 days of the year? <laughs> like, one. Yeah, when, when John when John dropped the line about um, uh, the buns, he I think he gave a disclaimer at the beginning. Of I it. did. I knew yeah. it was coming, too. Bill yeah. was just like, carrots. Right, I, knew that. <laughs> I was like, everybody will know what I mean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You you had you had no idea that that would have such a strong reaction. Oh yeah, no, I totally thought this was like an average thing. Oh, that's awesome. That is good stuff. Um. Anyway, yeah. Wow, semester's gone. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah exactly. Semester's over. This is the last Sunday morning we'll be here. Hopefully, we're gonna have a new time and new, new time. Yeah. Um. Next semester, new day and new time. Uh, that's all I was trying to say. Uh, next semester, Sunday mornings was. We had the we could talk about football, but getting up kind of stunk. Yeah. Um, next semester also we'll plug this now. Me and David are trying to launch a show, oh, not good. sports. Promo. Yeah, <laughs> promo. Not this. a sports show. That we're trying to do a lot of shows. If you listen to Emmy Wire at all, at any other times they talk they uh, bring bands that are playing in the Milwaukee area. We're trying to do that with comedians. comedians that come in. Baby. So we have we don't know if it's gonna work or not. Am I gonna be your? Am I oh, gonna it's be gonna your work, guest, man. Guest one? Oh, it's gonna work. Yeah, we're gonna are you doing stand up in the area in, in the? In a near future. I don't know. I think I'm a pretty funny guy. Well, I we, we want to do like people who are like have short ears funny. in comedy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna see how that goes. We're both kind of comedy nerds and love comedy. So, um, eventually we're gonna get Judd Apatow have, on the show. Eventually. eventually. That's the goal. Just side note: Have you guys? Uh, do you guys watch Last Comic Standing? Do you watch that? No. So you you haven't you don't know who Joe Mackey is? No. Oh, look him up. He is the okay. best. And. Uh, comedy, show. comedy nerds. How about uh, Merry Christmas! Exclamation point singer John Lajoie, best, my favorite. We'll think about it. We'll, we'll I've never heard of John Lajoie. How can you call yourself a comedy nerd if you never heard of John Lajoie? Yeah, He's the best. The, did you watch the league? Yeah. Yeah. He was Taco. Oh, that's. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah, know who that is funny. then. Yeah, he's, he's hilarious. Show, His we'll name is Taco. That's so funny. Yeah, that's great. Um, so we'll see. We're gonna try to make that happen. Um, yeah. Good plug. Um. Anything you guys want to plug? I'm getting my shows from Beer Meister Thursday, whether he likes it or not. So <laughs> okay. that's about it. Yeah, you heard you heard it now, Beer. Whether you like it or not, <laughs> here comes. I Phil. guess, guys, too. Uh, last, we'll do uh, like final thought here. Is I mean, we're done. We're f- done with our first semester in college. As I say that out loud now, it's really weird yeah. trying to wrap my brain around that. Any thoughts from the first semester? It, college is a blur. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Jeez, it's, Phil. It's a, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Phil. <laughs> it's a trip, man. <laughs> he follows it up with that. Oh, Love it. Oh, 
Love it. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> if you're keeping a G rated, man, college is a blast. A blur. A blur. A blur. No, he meant I college is a blur. No, I know what man. he meant, but it just came out like he's been drinking five days a week. <laughs> it's like carrots. It's, like it's, it's carrots exactly. and beer. I was thinking he'll be like, oh, yeah, I learned how to manage my time. No, man. It's a blur. I don't remember. <laughs> we're going to get we're gonna get a new intro. We're going to get a new intro for next uh, next season and um, with sound bites. Uh, yeah, that's the that's the soundbite. <laughs> that's college is a blur, man. <laughs> like Classic. Phil Panarski. No, nah, I know what you blur. meant. It feels like it feels like yesterday was August. It really does. Yeah. Um, and we're in December now. I remember when I re reunited with him. We, me and David met at preview, and uh, we made made a bet at preview that he stuck to. He's a man of his word. Wait, no, he's not. He was been ten bucks. Oh, that's true. He does have ten bucks. <laughs> I have a twenty. <laughs> um, I have like six bucks worth of change. Does no, that work? I'm not losing an extra four. Yeah, four. <laughs> college, college, another student. college yeah. lesson right there. You can't, <laughs> can't do uh four. Yeah, four bucks is four bucks. Um, but yeah, college is a lot of fun. If you know, to future, uh, if the future, the seniors, future, enjoy it. It's, uh, you're gonna have a blast next year. If you're listening, um, if, you, if, if you're, you're listening, listening, if any of our listeners are, are seniors, are seniors, I, I don't know. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I mean, you figure it out. I feel like I've figured out a, a not all of it, but a decent amount now. Where it's you know, it's you, once you get in the groove, it's a good time. You yeah. figure out your study times. You figure out your hangout times. You figure out your you know extracurricular times. It's a fun. Yeah, it was a fun doing this, guys. You watch a, a lot, lot more Netflix and you listen to a lot more music. A lot of music. A lot of FIFA. We haven't played FIFA in a long time. Yeah, we need to play FIFA um, soon. A lot of Madden. A lot of FIFA. A lot of a lot of football, a lot of screaming and yelling in mm-hmm. O'Donnell. Um, Seriously. Yeah. At all hours. No respect to the quiet hours, which I'm okay with. Twenty four study. Twenty four seven quiet hours now. Yeah, I don't study. Well, people, people were screaming in my hall last night. It yeah, does not apply. It doesn't apply. Quiet hours are are a silly concept, yeah. but very silly. Who studies in their room? Who actually studies in their room? Oh, I've done. I whole, do. I've I done. Do. I've done some. Whole, you study it with. Well, okay, you right, but is. Is loud noise from another area gonna affect the no, way that you're do- what you're doing in your room? Exactly. I mean, that's the thing. I, I don't know. Sometimes I'd like it quiet at 1:30. Okay, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's no, fair though. Sleep, that's yeah. real quiet hours. I'm mean, if I'm doing something at 4:30, I don't want some guy coming. Hey, you need to quiet down, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Go to the library then if you want quiet. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There's there's places to study elsewhere. Shut the find them. Um. But yeah, wow. It's 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 kind of, we're one eighth of the way done through college. Done with our lo- like no class next week. I have to unfortunately stay here for the next week. I have a final on Friday, so Me too. be hanging out until Saturday. I'm done Monday at or Tuesday at nine ten. What? Yeah, ten a.m. or p.m. a.m. That's really nice. Whenever the yep. calm test is. So you got a lot of uh, a lot of studying to do these probably this weekend. No, I got I mean, one you, final. Oh, you, oh, calm's your only final. Yeah. Oh, oh that's wow. nice. And I have to I have to finish my theology paper, which it'll be interesting. Uh, I it, it's Sam. fire, <laughs> fire theology paper. Just uh, it's fire. Yeah. That's <laughs> uh, what's it about? It's about it's fire. That's what it is. Yeah. Keep it off paper, it's man. about yeah. flames. <laughs> uh and then yeah, study for the calm. Yeah. Kill it. Yeah. Go home. Yeah. You'll be back Kill in mass out. before me. Yeah, I'll I'll warm it up for you. I'll warm it up for warm. me. Yeah, warm up twenty eight for me. I will twenty eight. Um, and we'll be home soon enough. It's gonna be good to go home. Maybe fun. we'll run into each other, John. How how There's weird? A good would that chance. Be? That's gonna be how, weird. How weird would that be? Uh, we'll hang out. You can text me. Yeah. Um, yep. I wouldn't want to hang out with you. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. <laughs> run into each other in North Reading yeah, in the middle in the middle ground. I yeah. might be there. I got a couple, I got a friend in there. You can go get a donut at Heavenly Donuts. That's oh, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Heavenly Donuts is really good. Yeah. I've never actually been. Believe it or not, they're, really, they're pretty good. Are they Do you have you had Canes? It's not as good as Canes. No. No. Just Canes donuts. They're, it's only they only have one. Where is it? Where is it? Saugus. Yeah, I don't go there. Oh, okay. I go north. Yeah, well, I mean, we I, I go there just for canes. That's the only reason. To go. That's the only reason you go to Saugus. It's just donuts. It's donut place. Donut shop. Really good. Um, I can't wait to yeah. Can't wait to be home. See the fam. See the dog. See the friends. See the city. See the city again. It's gonna be good. Uh, wow, guys. So, uh, any last comments before we sign off? Thanks for listening to Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I guess thanks to, to you guys some for listening. Crazy stuff that yeah. has come out of my mouth in the past <laughs> 3 shows. Past 10 minutes. <laughs>
Crazy. <laughs> okay, college is moving fast. What moves fast? A blur. A blur. I get you. No. I mean, Sonic I, the Hedgehog. I, I, I get it. Right. One, it was the car- It was a it, carrot. It's, it's the fact that I said man afterwards. Phil, what's, probably... what's going to be? No, your it was goal? the fact you called it a blur. That was. <laughs> what, what's going to be the goal for you this Christmas break? Ride a bike. No. I'm not a ride a bike. No, That's I, if I get a we bike are, for we, Christmas, it is, we are teeing off. On <laughs> 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 what's your favorite moment? Oh, remember that stupid thing Phil said that one time. Remember when he said carrots? No, we we always know what you mean. It's just yeah. it comes it out. Comes it comes out just, horribly. Uh, yeah. Articulation is, right. a, is an art. It's an art. The fact that it came we're out learning it. is bad. Yeah, we're learning. We're getting through. Yeah, um, see? That's awesome. Well, guys, for the final time this semester, for Tim Sirota, Phil Panarski, David Sando, I'm John Hand. Until next semester, thanks for listening. I'm going to shed a tear. <laughs> <laughs> Great job.